Well, hey, what's going on? This is Pastor Matt here. Today we are going to look at the Book of Common Prayer. I have already previously done a very brief review of this book, printed by Cambridge, uh, the Book of Common Prayer, 1662. Today, however, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the morning prayer office. For those of you who have grown up perhaps in different traditions besides the Anglican or Episcopalian tradition, perhaps praying in the office is a very new concept to you, and it was to me as well. But I've learned a little bit about it, and I'd like to share with you what I have learned. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Book of Common Prayer to the Morning Prayer Daily Office. And this is a series of prayers and Bible readings that you can do either by yourself or with company. So it starts off with what are called the sentences of Scripture. And you would read one or two or several of these to set the mood and the theme for your prayer. And after you read them, you take just a moment and reflect or pray on the theme that's introduced. could be repentance or the glory of God or some other such theme. If you're going to pray together with other believers, there's a introduction or a welcome to confession that will start here, dearly beloved brethren, and invites those who are participating in the service to confess their sins. And then over here, you have your actual confession of sin that you will pray and think about uh, the ways in which we've transgressed the law of God as sinners. And then there is an absolution or remission of sin, which can be proclaimed by the pastor, minister, or priest. If you're alone, you can uh, declare yourself forgiven, I suppose. Turning the page then, we come over to the Lord's Prayer and the Gloria Patri, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you sing that in church. And then you'll come next to what is called the Venite, Exultamus Domino. And you wonder, where does all this Latin come from? Well, the Latin titles to the Psalms are simply a translation of the first line of that particular psalm. So do not be freaked out by the Latin if you're not used to that. Psalm 95 here is the Venite, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. And this psalm has been used for many centuries as an introduction or a call to worship. Okay, It's a joyful, a joyful way to invoke God's presence and to prepare your heart to come into his presence. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to the reading of the Psalms. Now, the Book of Common Prayer is huge on the Psalms, and in fact, it contains the entire Psalter in the Coverdale translation, which actually predates the King James Version. So what we're going to do then is we're going to have one of our ribbon markers, and for me, it's this purple or maroon ribbon, and I'm going to flip to the Psalter in the Book of Common Prayer. And you'll notice here that the entire Psalter is divided over 30 days of readings, morning and evening. So since today is the 30th of January, we'll come to day 30 for morning prayer. And we will read, as assigned, Psalms 144, 145, and 146. And then later on tonight, if we do the evening prayer, we'll do 147 and onward. So the first thing you'll notice if you begin to pray the office of the Book of Common Prayer is that it is rigorously biblical, and we're going to see that more as we go through. So let's go back to our gold marker, and we'll return right to where we were in the order of service. We had just read the Psalms, and then we are instructed to pray the Gloria Patri again. And then we will come next to our next reading of Scripture, which is our Old Testament reading. We'll leave our gold marker here. And what we need to do is we need to flip then to the table of lessons. Now, there are two tables of lessons that you can choose. The alternate table of lessons uh, is a little bit more modern. I think it came in the 1920s. And then there's an older table of lessons, which we will look at uh, right now. Uh, one is based on the Christian calendar year, which would be a relation to Advent, Lent, Epiphany, uh, and so on. And um, this calendar right here is a daily one based on the date. So if you prefer that, you can do it based on the date. So if we look to January 30th, which is today's date, we'd be instructed to read Genesis chapter 43, 
verses 25 to chapter 44, verse 14. So I would then bring out my Bible. Here's my Bible. And I would flip to Genesis chapter uh, 44, or 43 rather, whatever it was. And I would read that day's assigned reading. Okay, So there will be a reading in the Old Testament, and later on we'll see that there's also a New Testament reading. So you've already read quite a bit in the Psalms, and then you'll get an Old Testament lesson. And later on we'll have a New Testament. So then we're going to go back to our, our prayer book with our gold marker. And we will see the Te Deum Laudamus, a very ancient Christian prayer. Very beautiful. It's not from the Bible, but very biblical in its scope. Or this other one, the Benedicte Omnia Opera. This is another canticle, another extra biblical song. And then we will come then to our New Testament reading. So what do we do? Well, once again, we're going to leave our gold marker where we are here in the prayer service, and we're going to flip back to our calendar of readings. Uh, this time, let's just assume we're using the alternate table of lessons. And so what we would do is we'd find the day. Today happens to be Monday, the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. So then I would read my New Testament reading, which said 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And so once again, I'll switch books, go over to my Bible, I will find 1 Corinthians in my Bible, and I will read the day's assigned reading. So now we've done uh, several Psalms, we've done an Old Testament reading, and we've done a New Testament reading as well. And we're still not quite done yet. Then we'll come back to some biblical readings. Uh, the Benedictus is from uh, Luke chapter 1. The Jubilate Deo is from Psalm 100. Now you don't have to do all of these that are suggested. There is some option in here as well. And sometimes if you are in a hurry, you can leave out one or two of the readings. Um, but the Book of the book of Common Prayer really keeps it biblical. Now then, you'll come to another couple of prayers here. And here's one that's called the Collect for the Day. Now this too needs a little bit of explanation for us non-Anglicans. The year is divided into 52 Lord's Days. And for every Lord's Day, there is what is called the Collect of the Week. It's a, it's a public prayer. And so we'll flip now to the section of Collects. And here you have to know your Christian calendar a little bit. Uh, this one is for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. That would be today. And I will read my Collect. Uh, this is the weekly prayer. It's something to meditate on the entire week. Each week gets its own Collect, and special days get special ones as well. And then notice here that there's more Bible reading. We have an epistle reading, and we have a gospel reading. And those would be normally read in church on Sunday. So that's kind of like your verses of the week. You have daily verses, and then you have your verses of the week. And then we will return back to our order, the morning prayer order again. And there are a few more collects. Again, I take these to be optional. Um, Focus on the one that you want to. Notice here, this is interesting for us Americans, that there's a prayer for the Queen's Majesty. The, uh, uh, there happens to be a queen right now, but if there was a king, it would, we'd be praying for him. Uh, and then normally, you will end with two things here. You will end with the prayer of St. Chrysostom and the blessing from 2 Corinthians, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. So overall, we get a very heavy dose of biblical readings. Uh, four readings for every day. You have an Old Testament and a New Testament reading in the morning. And wash, rinse, and repeat that again in at night. And you have a massive dose of psalms to read every day. And so the Book of Common Prayer is a way to pray through the main themes of confession, praise, thanksgiving, uh, intercession, and of course, keeping moving through the Bible on a very rigorous pace. Okay, well, thanks for checking out this video on the Book of Common Prayer. Um, if you're interested in getting one of these, by the way, I will put the link to the Amazon site directly in the description of this video. You'll have to toggle down, perhaps, and you can go get this beautiful book of common prayer to enhance your devotional life. Thanks for checking in. See you soon.